a multi-million pound mega railway repair machine. The machine altogether is about 170 tons. Unfortunately, we can't bring it by rail, so it needs to be put onto lorries. Can a team haul this giant 1,400 miles from Austria to the UK by rail, sea and road without a scratch or dent? Look at these absolute idiots. Yes, guys, let them have it. <laughs> Absolute morons. A monster diesel locomotive weighing in at 105 tonnes. Some people call them the unsung heroes of the railway world. Can an elite crew safely navigate this oil-burning heavyweight on an epic cross-country adventure? Coming for a nice and steady, mate. The teams must battle. Mechanical mayhem. You can see it from here, it's looking quite bad. Massive machines. Six P4 pushing 100 and something ton. And treacherous traffic. Lovely antics of London eye. To deliver these enormous engines on time. A titanic task. Even for the world's toughest train truckers. the historic city of Linz in Austria. On the banks of the Danube sits a railway giant, active in over a hundred countries. Plasser and Toya build railroad superheroes. Plasser and Toya are the world's largest manufacturer of on-track machines. These are the machines that are used on the railway every night either to build the railway in the first place or to maintain it and look after it. Workers here are preparing this curious machine, hot off the assembly line for an epic journey that will see it travel by rail, sea and truck, 1,408 miles to the UK. This multi-million pound giant may look like a lunar lander, but it's actually a very special machine used to repair railway tracks. It's called a railway tamping machine and helps position the stone chips that sit underneath the rails, called ballast. Tamping is the process of squeezing the ballast underneath the sleepers to hold them in position. Over time, rail tracks drift and sink as millions of tons of train traffic passes overhead. In the railway's early days, tamping was a back-breaking task that would have been done by hand. They used crowbars, they measured the track themselves, pushed it over to where it should be, and then they manually tried to pack the stone underneath it. Today, this ingenious ballast sifter is capable of tamping 900 metres of railway line every hour. The machine starts by analysing the track and calculating how much it has shifted from its original position. It then grips the rails and lifts both track and sleepers. Circular discs push the rails back into the correct position, while hydraulic prongs dig down and squeeze the ballast to lock the sleepers firmly in place. The machine's tools and apparatus can work non-stop, while its frame crawls forward along the tracks like a giant caterpillar, making it quick and economical to operate. We've got the machine ready to be brought to the UK. Unfortunately, we can't bring it by rail at the moment, so it needs to travel by rail up to the north of Germany. It has to then be put onto lorries, onto the ferry and over to the UK. This powerful diesel locomotive is pulling the tamping machine on the first leg of its epic journey. It will travel 763 miles by rail from Linz in Austria to the port of Cuxhaven in Germany. Once at the port, a team of heavy hauling specialists will need to carefully load its two separate sections onto trucks to board the ferry. Trucking a monster machine like this calls for an elite crew. Alice Heavy Haulage. 
Strategically based in the Midlands is a company that specialises in moving trains by road. Two Unimats to come from Plassers in Austria, right? Two of their crews will have just five hours to load the tamping machine and carefully drive it onto the ferry. They will then sail 404 miles to the port of Immingham, where the trucks will need to carefully disembark. They must then drive 241 miles south to London and fight their way through busy narrow streets to deliver this Goliath to a rail yard where it will be put to work repairing train tracks across the country. The machine altogether is about 170 tonnes. Um, splits down, main piece about 100 tonnes, smaller piece just under 70 tonnes. So yeah, good sized piece of, uh, piece of equipment. It rests on the shoulders of the logistics team to select the best route, the best crew, and the best kit to bring the machine back to the UK. It's dawn at the German port of Cuxhaven, a busy freight hub that handles thousands of containers and cars each day. It's taken three days for the diesel locomotive to pull the tamping machine 763 miles from the workshop to the dockside. It's split in two and ready to load. Pulling into harbour, the 187-metre Jutlandia Seaways Ferry arriving from its 24-hour voyage from Immingham in Lincolnshire. Nestled behind a line of luxury SUVs, another great British export. A pair of Alalee's heavy haulage trucks. Heading up today's operation is Zach Bancroft. Everything rolling all right, yeah? At 30 years old, Zach is Alalee's youngest driver. Go on, Alex, yeah? Zach's second man is Alex Whitehouse. Go on, man. Keep it going. And driving truck two is Kev Norris. OK, watch the tugs, mate, because they're coming on the boat. Kev's recently taken on a new right-hand man. Hey, Warren, door. Warren Tees. Left me door open. It's filling full of water. It's cold, it's wet, and it's windy. And I don't like either. <laughs> We've got to get it done. We've got a ferry to catch. The crew have just five hours to load both parts of the machine and board the vessel before it sets sail for the UK. So we're in Cook's Arvin to collect this new machine. Slightly different method to normal way of loading the rail machines. The team plan to load the heavier 98-tonne part of the tamping machine onto Zach's 13-axle trailer by rolling it up and over Kev's trailer. To pull off this engineering feat, they must line up both trailers over the dock's sunken railway, then add special connectors called jump rails to span the gap. They must then build a ramp from Kev's trailer down to the tracks, allowing them to winch the machine over Kev's trailer and onto Zach's. Both trailers need to be set at exactly the same height. An inch out and the tamping machine could derail with catastrophic consequences. We've got over under the ton going up this ramp. We've got to get as much wood under it as possible. There's one drawback with Zach's ingenious loading plan. Because the winch doesn't go uh, far enough, so we push the, the tamper up to the bottom of the ramp so the winch will reach. Six people pushing 100 and something ton. With everything set, that winder handle there is going to foul the rail. Can you turn it over for me? Just as they start to winch the 98-tonne machine onto the ramp... Kev, chock it for a minute. Zach spots a problem. As this first bogey is just going up the gradual incline of the ramp, the guard iron's going to foul on the bracket. The multi-million pound machine is in danger of ripping itself apart. We've got to do it further down as well. Zach needs to think fast or this railway mega machine will miss the boat.
In Germany, Zach's team have hit a problem in their mission to load this massive multi-million pound rail tamping machine. That's getting closer to there. So we're going to undo these six bolts and drop this keeper plate down to, make, to grow that gap. The machine's bodywork is edging perilously close to its bogies as the heavyweight inches up the ramp. Happy gents. Zach's quick thinking does the trick. Go again. Hold on. Same again. But hauling the 98-ton machine across the trailers proves painfully slow, as the engineers have to make constant adjustments. We've got one over now, Kev. It's right on the jump rail now. OK. It's just coming on now. Three. Two, one. Stay there a minute. Got there, mate. We're supposed to be lorry drivers, but you have to be an engineer when you come to some of these jobs. One half loaded, one more to go. Right, don't put your hands on the winch, because it'll pull out and it'll take your fingers when you do it, OK? On board the Jutlandia Seaways, Captain Andre Mekiv is carefully planning the evening sailing. The trucks have to stay in the middle uh, because if the lorry is loaded and it, shifting of the cargo by ship's rolling would be damaged to the cargo or to the unit and to the ship as well. Zach's crew raced to load the second half of the tamping machine. The captain wants the trucks to board early. We're going on first. From the sounds of it, we're going in the middle and you're going to end up in front of me in the middle of the ship. It's time to get rolling. Plenty of inside. Parking a 30 metre truck. That's it, bang on. Backwards. Going up the ramp now, keep it going. Up a narrow ramp. You're right on the height, yeah? Height's oh, good, man, height is good. Into the tightly packed ship deck. Tests Zach's skills and patience to the limit. Take your front end over, another three foot to the right. Why does they always change their mind following the yellow line and then you get halfway down the boat and then you got to move? Now, me, I'm not the one that's working on the boat. I'm just doing what they're telling me to do. With Zach's truck in place, Kev can slot in front. Right, I've got about six spots. Keep going, keep going. The crew can now clock off and get set for the crossing back to the UK. Nice to have a break. We don't get a break very often, it's always busy, so you get 24 hours on here normally, so you get to have a relax, room to yourself, no second man in the cab, great. The English Riviera, a holiday hotspot along the southwest coast of Devon. The beaches here are a big draw over the summer as are the area's heritage steam railways, which wind their way through the picturesque county. This is the South Devon Railway. It spans over seven miles and was built in the 19th century to connect the local towns and industry. The railway here originally ran up to Ashburton, which was a distance of nine miles, and it was built in 1872. It was mainly used for wool and coal and, and that sort of trade. Despite being a steam railway, the day-to-day -day workhorses are the diesel engines. Most of the diesels that we have on this line would have never have worked here originally. Because the railway closed in 1958, a lot of these diesels, they didn't find their way onto these sorts of branch lines, really, until the 60s or 70s. To enhance the railway's authenticity, the team are organising a unique locomotive swap with the nearby Dartmouth Steam Railway line. The Class 37 is going over to our friends at the Ainton and Dartmouth Steam Railway, and um, in return, their smaller Class 25 is going to make its way over here, which would be a far more appropriate uh, locomotive. The Class 37 was originally built in 1965 at the Vulcan Foundry in Lancashire. This diesel engine was designed to haul both passengers and freight. 309 of them were built to be the go-anywhere middle weight locomotive, capable of working freight and passenger trains across pretty much anywhere on the network. 
It may have been built in the middle of the last century, but its popularity has never waned. Some people call them the unsung heroes of the railway world. They've worked sort of consistently since the 60s and still working today on the main line. It's probably one of British Rail's best investments ever made. Over 19 metres long, this 105-tonne Goliath has earned cult status amongst fans of diesel engines. Class 37 is a very popular in the heritage scene. Many were preserved by individuals and groups. In fact, there were nearly 50 preserved at one point. They've got a very distinctive noise, they've got a very distinctive shape. They are always a big draw at Heritage Railways. I do like the Class 37s. They're a very good engine, very enjoyable. Moving the gargantuan Class 37 to the Dartmouth Steam Railway will be a monumental mission for Allerley's crews. Madeleine Haulage. The team need to haul the engine 15 miles to reach the Steam Railway's yard in Churston Ferris. This massive diesel engine is too big to navigate the narrow and twisty country lanes. So the team must use the main roads that will add an extra 24 miles to their journey. It's the day of the big move. Heading up the heavy haulage team is Eric Harrison. With more than 20 years of train trucking under his belt, no job is too big for Eric. Go on, keep going, keep going. Eric's right-hand man, Chris Case, skillfully guides their trailer into the yard. while rail crews shunt the Class 37 into position. We're going to uh, put down our steel ramp. Once that's in position, we'll set the trailer up, get in position and uh, a gentle pull up onto the trailer. With the ramp in place... It's not a problem. The next challenge is to line up the three metre wide trailer with the ramp. Ten foot to go, Eck. Go on, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Hold it there, wreck. Just lift and lower the front now. The trailer sits on uneven ground. This makes it impossible for the ramp to connect flush with the trailer, which could cause the engine to derail. To solve the problem, the team must add jump rails to bridge the gaps between the trailers and the ramps. This will allow them to set the trailer at the correct angle and let the engine travel smoothly onto the trailer without derailing. Put more that side, Eck. The next task is to winch the Class 37 onto the trailer. You come down here, right? But there's a problem. It's slightly downhill to the ramp. Uh, we can't unfasten the coupling. If they release the engine's brakes, the 105-tonne Class 37 will roll out of control. The port of Immingham in Lincolnshire opened in 1912 to export coal. Today, the port handles hundreds of thousands of containers every year. The Jutlandia Seaways Ferry, carrying the supersized tamper machine from Cuxhaven in Germany, prepares to dock. Zach's team have spent 24 hours at sea. There's no thermostat in the other rooms. You could turn and control it on the other boat. You could control the heating. On this one, there was nothing. Like, it was just red off. It's going to be a long day for both crews. They need to truck the two pieces of this Goliath 241 miles from the port to the rail yard in London. Last on, first off. Got the radio on, Warren. Kev eases the truck down the ramp. Yeah, watch it as the back axles and the seesaws. One goes down, the other one off the mic. Kev will drive to London first to unload the 70 ton machine this afternoon. Zach and Alex's 98 ton load is too big to drive into the capital during the day. 
they need to wait just outside the city until after the evening's rush hour. Escort driver Jason Priest is on hand to help steer the oversized loads clear of trouble. Look at these absolute idiots. Yes, guys, let them have it. <laughs> absolute morons. Settling into the journey, the crew used the time to sort out some important matters, such as the best way to blow a lottery ticket. What would I be doing if I wasn't a drugger? I would be buying vintage tractors, restoring them, repairing them, collecting them, and then collect a few more. To go with the collection that you've already got? Yes. So what would you do with your 15 million? I'd look into some sort of business that is gonna, always going to be around, such as, such as poo. So as long as you've got people, you're always going to have poo, aren't you? So you're always going to need toilets, you're going to need port loos you're going to need drainage. Anything involved with that, you're in a job for like, all right, it stinks, but what doesn't? <laughs> At Alalee's headquarters, the heavy haulage logistics team are dispatching an advanced party to clear the path for the trucks before they arrive in London. London is not designed for our size trucks and it's always quite hard work to get it in. People park on the corners in the wrong places, so we send people down earlier to put no parking cones out to just keep the areas clear. It is quite a tight site to get to. They need to navigate their trucks into Plasser's UK yard, here in the middle of the busy suburb of West Ealing. All right, mate, coming up to you. This will be new boy Warren's first time steering a train through the capital streets. Well, let's watch on this kerb on the near side when we go up. We might have to put a piece of wood down. The first challenge is to navigate Kev around a roundabout. This will be tight. Hold it there. So Warren uses wooden planks to protect the kerb. Right, come forward. All right, mate, creep it forward. You all clear? Yeah, OK, keep going. Yeah, keep going, keep going. There you are, the back. The West London streets are an urban assault course for this rookie. Right, you've just passed the car now. But with a bit of help from Kev... It'll go around nice if we use that kerb half and half, mate. Warren steers the machine into the yard. OK, mate, same again. Safe and sound. <laughs> On the southwest coast in Devon, yeah, we can't uncouple him, so we're pulling the whole train at the minute. Eric and Chris's mission to load this monster diesel locomotive has hit the buffers. The massive engine is on a slope. As the winch pulls it towards the ramp, the engine could pick up momentum. Too much force on the ramp could knock it out of alignment and cause the engine to derail. <laughs> Seasoned haulier Eric hatches a plan. I think you're going to have to uh, come with us, I think. <laughs> Just let the whole lot, the whole train come down uh, till it levels out, then we can uncouple the loco from the uh, rest of the train. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right then. They'll use the weight of the carriages to anchor the engine from rolling out of control as they winch it. It's going fine, nice and slow. What was that? Probably a stone under the rail. It takes an hour to haul the oversized engine onto the trailer. With the Class 37 in position, Eric and Chris pack away the ramp and lubricate the chains that secure the engine on the trailer but they could also do with a little less friction. You don't need blows on there, do you? You do. 
don't. You do. You don't. You do. You don't. You need a little square just there. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Trust me, I know. With the chains in place, they get ready to hit the road. Bit, eh? We're right on the back end, keep going. Still all good. I'm fucking behind you, mate, from here. Yeah, okay, Rob. Escort driver Rob pulls in front of the truck while a second driver guards the rear. But just as they put pedal to the metal, Yes, mate. Uh, I'm not sure if we've got problems with that back turn or not. We're smoking a bit. They run into trouble. Eric, Bob said that there's a bit of, looks like a bit of smoke coming from the back tyre or the back wheel in the trailer. On their way to London with the 98-tonne half of the massive Austrian tamping machine, Zach's team debate the big issues. Jason, what is your favourite biscuit? Ooh, maybe, well, I'm quite partial to a gold bar. Personally, I've got a couple of different ones for different reasons. Like, for dipping biscuits, it's got to be rich too. And just as a biscuit, just for eating, you know, not dipping or messing about with. A dark chocolate digestive, personally, but then I look like I love dark chocolate. As you can tell by my chins. Oh, I forgot shortbread. Yeah, but do you class shortbread as a biscuit? I do. Well, what else is it? It is a biscuit, isn't it? But it's not, it's not a cake. No, I know. Bread, though, isn't it? It's just bread. Is it? Not sure. I know in the name it says shortbread, but mm. uh, it can't be no, it can't be no 29p special. There's some things you can't cut corners on, and that is the tartan tin. Ahead of them in West Ealing. Okay, tilt forward again. Kev's team is already gearing up to unload the first 70-tonne section of the machine. OK, take it on, mate. OK, off. Three foot to go. That's it, as soon as I take these chains off now, it's chopped, it's secured, that's my job done. Zach's team is on a motorway slip road, sitting out the rush hour. So we're not that far away, um, so we're at Junction 2 now, we're getting off at Junction 1, and then it'll start getting a bit more interesting. 7.30, they head into town. As they pull off the motorway, they hit their first obstacle, a tight right-hand turn. OK, Jase. Go on, mate. Go on. Go on. Yeah, no, nah, you ain't going to make that, mate. You're going to have that second light. What, definitely or maybe? Definitely. As they attempt to turn right off the slip road, the truck becomes stuck and blocks the junction. If Zach moves the truck any further forward, the huge load would strike the traffic lights, damaging the valuable machine and causing gridlock. Hold it there. I'll do the steering. Alex needs to work fast to reach and engage the remote control that steers the trailer's wheels. Just wait till my lights go back green, Alex. 
Okay, whenever you're ready. With all 13 axles steering together, they clear the junction. That's it, mate. Lovely job. All right, I'm going to shoot up and uh, stop them. They're back on the move. Zach is following the same route that Kevin took. But with a heavier, longer load, more traffic and less light, this drive will be a whole lot tougher. Well, I'm coming on to the roundabout now, Jace. Alex, remember to steer with me, not before me, OK? Yes, mate. On that kerb on the right-hand side in a minute, there's a low bit of the kerb which you can use. Don't go over the manholes. Yes, all right. Go on, mate. Keep going. We're not friends of the locals for coming in this time of night, but it's the only thing we can do, because we can't come in the daytime. If you had a £3 million house, would you want this coming past your house in the day? <laughs> After a long day on the road, Go on, we got about a foot on the right hand side inside now. Aren't we? They make it into the rail yard. There's just one task left get the 98 ton machine off the trailer and safely back on the tracks. In Devon, Eric and Chris are in trouble. Smoke is billowing from one of the wheels of the trailer carrying the diesel engine. Yeah, I think it's took ages for the brakes to come off. They should be off now. There is a, an old lay-by just over this bridge, mate. Brake binding. The wheels on one of the axles are locked. This is because air is not reaching the trailer's pneumatic brakes. Friction caused by the trailer moving whilst the brakes are stuck has created smoke. Until the brakes are released, Eric and Chris are going nowhere. Brakes on, Eric. But it's coming back up to full again now. Again. We just need to make making sure that there's enough air going to it that the brakes release yeah, it properly. Yeah. Tidy. I think that's it sorted, I think. Yeah. With the air brake released. They can get back on the road. Right, whenever you're ready, then. Yeah, we're good to go. The next challenge is to steer the 19-metre-long load through these major roadworks. So at the top of these is where the roadworks are, right? The next set of lights you'll see is where you want to go the wrong side. <laughs> The works restrict the width of the road. So Rob's team have to move them clear of Eric's path. Might just need to tuck these a little bit, but we'll have a look. All right, mate, through you come. It takes the whole day to steer the engine through the villages that lead to the Dartmouth Steam Railway. But there's one final challenge. Yeah, we're back in and then driving down the slope. The only way to get into the rail yard is down a narrow, twisting hill. This will test Eric's true grit. Ah. 
In West Ealing, Zach's team need to unload the second half of the Austrian railway tamping machine. That's it, Dave. Here you go, Mum. Go on, bring it back in on the foot. I'll put you rail in. Off you come, then. Zach and Alex are only permitted to work 15 hours a day. That should be enough time to unload the machine and still get home to their own beds, but only if everything runs smoothly. To you. Go. Ha. It's just sitting on that joiner. Despite the 98 tonnes of rolling weight, this tiny join between the rail and ramp is enough to stop the engine in its tracks. Go. Come off again. Alex pulls the train backwards, hoping that a bit more momentum might do the trick. Maybe not. I might just take it out. Zach removes the packing from under the ramp to reduce the height of the join. Alex, come off. Look at that, though. Just like that. Finally, it's down, and time to pack up and head off. It's ten past midnight now. It's a, another, another job done. Went well, no issues. We're ready to roll now to get out of here. We'll be, we should be back in the yard by half two. Might be able to construct a bit of toast. Oh yeah. Now we're out of butter. No. Someone went to the shop on their way to oh, work oh, today. Good lad. Nice, but so nice and fresh, ready yeah. to go. Come on. Well done. Well done, mate. <laughs> Three weeks after its delivery, the engine gets to work. Its proud new owners will be sending it to every corner of the network, wherever rails need realigning. Today is the day the drivers have got the keys in their hands, it's ready to go. This is a rare opportunity to see the machine run during the day. From now on, it will only venture out under cover of darkness, working tirelessly through the night to keep the railways running. At the Class 37 diesel engine's new yard, Eric is preparing to drive the 19-metre-long locomotive down a narrow, twisting hill. Well, we're here. Now the uh, fun starts. The difficulty is, is you're coming down a steep slope and then trying to turn 90 degrees right, so the trail will be trying to tip it's crucial that you keep levelling the trailer at all times. As Eric negotiates the twisty descent, Chris balances the trailer's hydraulic suspension going, Eric. to ensure the top heavy load doesn't topple over. Oh, all right, to be honest. Yeah. Bit nerve wracking for a little bit, you know, because you're worried about the trailer, but it's round, so that's 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 the worst of it, hopefully. Next challenge. Anchor their unloading ramp into a tight bend in the track. You measured it, you, yep, that's where the ramp goes. That's where the ramp goes, yeah. Well, obviously, it don't, does it? Well, get it straight, that's a point be... anyway, so that can go over, can't it? Up here. Eric needs to line the trailer up with the ramp. Pick up forward there, I'll straighten the front and get the back over. With so little room to manoeuvre, 
he must drive into the engine shed and carefully straddle the trailer over the deep locomotive inspection pit. Are the front wheels past the pit yet? Tell when they're past the pitch. Before cautiously reversing the lorry up to the trailer. Just inch your back nice and steady. Oh, I'll keep going, keep going. The truck may finally be in position. Yeah, right. yeah. But they're not home and dry yet. Normally now we would winch him off, but the issue we've got, because the angle we've ended up on, we can't winch it off because the winch is not straight with the load. The angle of the winch, it just won't run off straight. It will, the winch get all tangled up and all sorts. Ever resourceful, Eric has a plan. They're coming up with another locomotive with a barrier wagon in between and they'll couple up to it and then they'll gently take it off. They hook an empty wagon between the diesel engine and shunter to avoid driving the shunter up the ramp. Do you want to watch here? I'll watch the point. Yeah, yeah. Job done. It does come off a little bit faster, but I mean, it was nice and steady at the crucial point where the wheels are about to come back from our rails onto their rails. Happy days. With the Class 37 settling into its new home on the English Riviera's prestigious coastal heritage line, it should be a crowd pleaser for many years to come. One week later, the second locomotive, the Class 25 Mercury, is moved down to the South Devon Railway. Swap complete, and both railways are delighted with their new oil-burning workhorses. I think it's a good idea to preserve these um, for posterity, future generations to enjoy them, not just as a static exhibit, to, but to see one that actually makes a noise and works.